morning. Welcome to this worship on Holy Trinity Sunday when we commemorate this doctrine of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three. We are glad that you are tuning in with us today. A couple of reminders. Uh, first of all, we uh, are offering a celebration of life, a funeral memorial for Ruth Lebrecht here at St. James this next Saturday, June 18th. Also, we hold in prayer today this family from our community here in Fort Wayne, uh, former members of our congregation here at St. James, Jane and Roger Sheely, on the sudden death of their grandson, Owen, and Owen's entire family and friends, the community who have raised and loved him. Uh, we hold him in prayer in his sudden death from, from a brain tumor. Uh, we offer the hope of the resurrection to them in this time. We continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the eighth chapter of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with, bounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle in the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, 
Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from the fifth chapter of Romans. <clears throat> Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. She hopped out of the passenger side of her car, and she came up to us. I was standing there with a youth who had just recently graduated, who has been a part of the ministries over at Faith. We had been doing what we do most Wednesday nights, standing out on the street in front of Faith, waving at cars, holding signs that invite them to come and receive a free meal. She was driving through with her family, and she jumped out of the car. She came up to us and, and thanked us, and then asked us a question, asked us about our worship times. And I pointed to the sign that was just behind me and explained briefly about the three congregations that worship in that space and the various times that we were there on a Sunday morning. And then she asked me a question. She said, now, now do you worship the God, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, the one that's like three in one, you know, like I'm a sister and an auntie and a daughter, but I'm still one person and God is one but three. And I quickly nodded my head and said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. You know, we're, we are Christians. We worship the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we confess our faith in the creeds. And she talked a little bit more and then, again, thanked us for the meals. And the meals were ready and hopped back in her car and said she hoped she would see us this Sunday. As she drove away, I was just kind of shocked. People ask us about our congregations and worship times all the time. But this was probably the first time anyone had ever asked me about our faith in that way. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God. I could tell that She'd been paying attention in wherever she had been worshiping in the past. She had heard that explanation in the past of the sense of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one and yet three, and yet three identities, and yet in one God. This God that we confess as we confess our creeds week after week as we name God in our worship in various forms, this doctrine that we lift up today, this belief system of Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, the one who makes us holy. It's a doctrine of the church that is so complex that scholars and theologians have literally spent centuries debating and trying to explain and understand this way that God interacts with us in God's creation in this world. It's something that we ourselves try to name and try to explain in our, in our writings, in our teachings, in our music, in our prayers. But it's something that no matter how much we study, how much we debate and pray and try to, to understand, <clears throat> we still find ourselves limited. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of like trying to hold on to water with your bare hands. That we can use words and images and we can try to hold it and encapsulate God. But the more we use, the more we find ourselves lacking the more that God seems to slip through our fingers, that it's just too vast. Our hands may end up wet. We have a, a sense of God, but no matter what we do, we can't get a sense of 
the fullness of who God is as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as three in one and one in three. And yet, our human nature can't help but keep trying. We can't help but keep trying to reach out, to look for something to hold on to, for something to have any kind of image or word or explanation that might help us know God even a bit more. Our scriptures today take us only so far. Our first reading describes wisdom, <clears throat> this, this presence of God that has been created by God's self. And she has been there from the beginning. We hear of this presence of God's wisdom that has been interacting with creation and interacting with God as God has been there in this world. But even this is limited. Even this, we struggle to wonder, is, is this wisdom described in Proverbs a hint of, of this one who will come as human flesh, the Word made flesh in Jesus? Is wisdom perhaps part of this understanding of the Holy Spirit? Who is this wisdom that we hear in this writing? And then the way that God is described in our psalm is this vast interaction with God's creation. And the ways that Paul writes, explaining the ways that we have access to the grace, the grace that comes through Jesus, God's word made flesh, the Son. And this Holy Spirit that helps us to know and understand who Jesus is and how Jesus has come into this world. All, again, just a, a fragment of who God is. Perhaps it's best to go back to that idea of the water, the water that's slipping through our fingers, and to think about the water in which we dip our fingers week after week as we come forward to receive communion, as we dip our fingers in that baptismal water, and some stays with us as we make that sign of the cross from our baptism, and some drips back into the bowl. We think about the way that God comes to us in that tangible substance of water, and the way that the triune God is made known to us in that sacrament. That God who first created the world, separating the waters. That God who created us as we literally floated in that water substance in the wombs of our mothers. As we relied on this water, as we live day after day needing this water to exist, and yet needing this water to leave our bodies, to be a part of this world, as so much of who we are exists in this interdependence with the fullness of creation, as, as our entire world relies on this substance that the Creator, the, the Father, has made. As we think about that baptismal water, that reminds us of that cross on which Jesus died, the water that flowed from his side as he died, those waters out of which he arose in his own baptism, the waters that wash over us as we are washed clean of our sin, as every day when we wash off the dirt and grime of this world, the, the bacteria and the, the things that we wish to keep us healthy, as we wash them away and remember in that action the waters that have made us clean, that have made us holy and righteous again in God's sight. 
that water of baptism into which that Holy Spirit flowed as we were welcomed into God's faith. As that Holy Spirit took that ordinary substance of water and made it so much more. It is there in that water that we experience again just a glimpse of this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As this gift of this God who is so much greater than anything we will ever understand. So today, as we stand in the mystery of this gift of who God is in our world for us, this mystery of this God who continues to be in and with and around us, this God who we come to worship, we dip our fingers in the waters, in the waters that may be in our homes, in the waters as we gather for worship, in the water that we take into ourselves, we dip our hands into this water and we remember this God who, who comes to us, who, who created us, who loves us, who forgives and redeems us, and who sends us out into the world, who enables us to believe in what God has done for us and who sends us out to proclaim this gift to the world. We remember this God who is so much more than we understand and who always will be. This Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this three in one and one in three. Holy Trinity. Amen. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological de devastation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, hear our prayer. Abiding Comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. We especially pray for Francis, Kathy, Carol, and for the families of Owen Sheely, especially his grandparents Jane and Roger. We pray that all would find comfort in their loss. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy Three, you are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital, vital relationships in our congregations and beyond. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness, even unto death. We especially remember the Emmanuel Nine, whom we commemorate this week. Console grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. Nourish us with these gifts, 
that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourish the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you bless the Israelites and cherish them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us in this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy. And fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours. O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit meets you in this meal, wherever you may be. This gift is for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.